All right, let's continue by looking at a few more examples. Okay, this is a pretty complicated integrand. There's a lot going on right here. And remember, the only rule that we know right now is the reverse power rule. And this integrand certainly doesn't fit that description. So we're going to have to do a rewrite. A lot of rewriting along the way, but don't leave off your integral symbol and your differential. Right. First thing you might want to do is rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half. Keep the dx. It belongs with the integral symbol. Many of you guys are going to want to pull up x to the negative 1 half. Then you would have to distribute x to the negative 1 half to x to the first and 1. Perfectly acceptable, but I want to remind you about the technique of separation. Break apart. Because I'm dividing by a monomial, I see this as okay, this term and this term. So I have the integral, x to the first divided by x to the half, subtract the exponents, x to the half. Plus, 1 divided by x to the half, pull x to the 1 half out of the denominator, because remember you're trying to use the reverse power rule. So what I just created was a sum of two terms, both of which are power functions. I can apply the power rule. So I'm coming down here. I'm ready to integrate. I will lose the integral symbol and the differential. Let me focus my attention on this term right here. Keep the base of x. Increase the exponent by adding 1. That will go to 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves. Same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. Hold off on the plus C, we'll just tack one on at the end. Plus, keep the base of X, increase to positive one half, divide by half, same thing as multiplying by two, so put the two here. Bring in the plus C so you can um, have the general solution. You're done, you're finished, you could do a rewrite, you could make it look different. If you wanted to rewrite this term, you'd have two thirds, Okay, and then right here, the numerator is your power, so it's the square root of x cubed. You can rewrite it that way, plus rewriting this term, 2 square root of x plus c. Notice that I'm not writing with x's, I'm writing with thetas. We need to be comfortable with different variables, different symbols. Okay, my integrand is this part of the uh, problem right here. It's what falls between the integral symbol and the differential. That's my integrand. Notice I have two terms. So I'm going to have to integrate them separately. If you would feel more comfortable changing all thetas to x's, that's certainly acceptable. So I'm going to work on this first term right here. Think of x squared power function, so theta cubed divided by 3 plus, okay, this term is not a power function, it's a trig function. So we need to go back in our memory, is secant squared the derivative of another trig function? Yeah. Secant squared is the derivative of tangent, so tangent of theta is the antiderivative for this term. Both the integral symbols gone, the differentials gone. Include your plus C for the general solution. Let's find the antiderivative for 2 sine x. What are the properties of integrals besides what I'm doing up here, an addition or, or difference property for integrals? Another property for integrals is this. Okay. This is just a constant multiplier. We can factor it out, so to speak. We can factor out a constant multiplier from an integral, from an integrand. We can't factor out a variable because there's change going on with that variable, that variable x or whatever the variable is that you're working with. But if I'm just dealing with a constant multiplier, not if I were to add or subtract, but if I'm dealing with a constant multiplier on this term right here, I can pull the 2 out. 
that's one skill, one strat or one strategy that you guys could use in finding an antiderivative. You're really kind of uncomplicating it, if you will, pulling the two out so you can just focus your attention right here on the sine of x. All right, so my answer should be two times whatever this antiderivative is of this integrand. Well, sine is the derivative of not cosine because cosine's derivative is negative sine. So sine must be the derivative of negative cosine. Remember, we're integrating. So sine is the derivative of negative cosine. So I'm going to bring in the negative, bring in the cosine. Don't forget your x plus your c. Check your work by differentiating. If you were to differentiate this term, you should get back to the integrand. That's my last example, and because it's my last example, I'm going to work down. You can work across, you can work down. I'm going to now work down. All right, when we look at this, um, this integral right here, I'm focusing my, focusing my attention on the integrand. I have two terms. I have this term, and then I have this term right here. Notice that this term right here has a 4 constant multiplier, but this term has a constant multiplier of 2. Well, I can't, I can't pull, you know, a, a 4 out from this term right here because um, I don't have a 4 there. So you're not just pulling, I mean, you could pull, I guess, a 2 out from both of these, but that still would leave a 2 right here. Here's a, here's a good way to handle this problem. Go ahead and rewrite each term with its own integral symbol. I don't do that all the time. You notice that I haven't done that all the time. Just different contexts determine whether or not you want to separate and give each term an integral symbol. Here I felt it was necessary because I'm going to pull a 4 out from this integral and only a 2 out from this integral, so it was helpful for me to separate. Stop, look down at your notes. Make sure your notes have, that you still have um, carried down the, the integral symbols. I'm, that's just a common thing, a common omission. And just want to kind of stop along the way and check and make sure that you have all the correct notation. All right, let's work on this term right here. So it's four times, I'm ready to integrate, cosine is the derivative of sine. So I drop the integral symbol, I drop the differential. I'll wait for the plus c at the end. Minus 2, sine right here, we just did this previously, sine uh, is the derivative of negative cosine, so I'll come over here and make that plus, and then I'll multiply by cosine of x plus c. That's your answer. Check. Find the derivative of this term. It would be 4 cosine x. Yep, that's what's here. Find the derivative of plus 2 cosine x. Well, that would be negative 2 sine x, which is in fact what's here as well. So everything checks, we're in good shape. So the main focus of this video was really um, using the reverse power rule on power functions, but here at the end I threw in some basic integration formulas with some of the trig functions that we worked with. Okay, so this is video part two.